when I look back on it now, knowing what I know, like the insomnia wasn't my only hormone issue. It was like the, the, whatever, the straw that broke the camel's back, right? Mm -hmm. There was all of these other red flags that my body was sending me um, that I just didn't listen or didn't know that it could be any other way. You know what I mean? So like really bad cramps or migraines, like my mom got migraines before her period, my Nana did. So I just thought, oh, it's just genetic. It's just what we have to live through. Everyone has cramps. All my friends have cramps. Like I thought it was it's just normal. Mm -hmm. And like, statistically, it's totally normal. But biologically, it's not. This is your body trying to tell you something. And um, I've read something recently where um, your like your menstrual cycle is now for women, your fifth vital sign. And I think that's so important, because it's such a really big gauge to your overall health. And we just we're ignorant about it. No one no one teaches us about it. Happy Friday, youth developer Patty Zito, your nutritional therapy consultant and lifestyle coach at your service. In today's video, we have my dear friend Karen, who's gonna guide us on how to live into our cycles. I'm talking menstrual cycles and mood. Are you beating yourself up because you don't have the energy to do X, Y, and Z? Or has anyone today called you moody? <laughs> we love to start with, you know, your story. I know that your mission is to empower women with movement, nutrition, and mindset. And yeah. I, that the order that you wrote that down is very interesting to me because it is my passion as well. I mm-hmm. want to hear how you arrive at those three things, movement, nutrition, and mindset. I, my very first job when I was a teenager, I was, um, I was into martial arts from a young kid and I competed in martial arts and I started coaching like the kid in kids tournaments so my very first job was coaching and I love coaching and teaching and then life happens and you take these like corporate jobs and you know you do the things you're supposed to do Um, and uh, a few years ago at my gym uh, which is uh, Mad Lab School of Fitness in Vancouver they're they're an accredited um, school of fitness so like okay Um, so I'm now a senior apprentice with them. Um, but yeah, I decided to go back to kind of my first love and I did a part-time for a long time. Um, and when I started, I was really unhealthy. Um, I was like almost 200 pounds, pretty sick, um, working like 40, 50, 60 hours a week. Um, and really it was, it was running and then, um, into the gym, which really started, um, just making me feel better, like moving my body again and, and fitness in general really helped me, um, to regain my health. And then, um, I added into that nutrition and I just started studying my stuff for myself. Like how can I best feed myself? And I, you know, I did all the things and I made all the mistakes from like (laughs) keto to carnivore to like vegetarian. Like I've tried all of it. Right. So, um, what year was that more or less? Oh gosh. So I was like 38 when I started off and I'm like 44 now. So yeah. So it's been a few years. Um, And uh, so, yeah, I was training and working out and coaching part time and still working my full time job. And um, I was uh, competing in Olympic weightlifting at the time. And um, so it was a few years ago when uh, one day I stopped sleeping. Mm. So like just stopped. And this went on for weeks and weeks. And I can remember like I'm just laying in my bed, staring at the ceiling at those like those white rough stucco dots on the ceiling um, all night. And I'm just going back and forth between getting frustrated and angry. You know, you're like, oh, yeah. if I go to sleep yes. right now, I can still get three hours. Yes. Um, and like, totally. and crying and like breaking down. I'm just like, I can't deal with this anymore. And so this went on for, for weeks and weeks. Um, and I went to visit my family doctor and um so I went in to see her and she didn't 
ask me any questions about diet, lifestyle, what was happening in my life. She didn't run any tests, any blood work, anything like that. She just wrote me a prescription for antidepressant. And I was like, but I'm not depressed. Like I feel like pretty <laughs> shitty right now because I haven't slept in weeks, um, right. but I'm not depressed. Yeah. Um, she's like, oh, it'll, it's fine. Just take them. They'll help you sleep. Wow. Um, so it was actually the pharmacist. So I, I went, took the prescription. This is Canada. So like cost me like $2 <laughs> to get this prescription filled. Yeah. And the pharmacist was like, he was the one that was like, um, I noticed this is a new prescription for you. Um, and, uh, I noticed your doctor hair has it here for sleep. Mm. And he's like, I just want you to really consider before you take these, because once you start taking them, you, you can't stop. Like your doctor will have to wean you off of them. You can't just stop taking this antidepressant. Yeah. So I got back into my car and I'm like, fuck, <laughs> like, yeah. I don't. Do want do? to like yeah. start taking this pill mm -hmm. um, that I can't stop taking. I still don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, I don't know why I'm not sleeping. I just, I felt completely dismissed by my doctor. Um, and I just, I just felt like at my wits end really. Um, and from there, uh, someone recommended um, a naturopathic doctor and she was also a Chinese medicine doctor. Um, so I went to see her and she spent like two hours talking to me, right? Nice. Like she, mm -hmm. she through our appointment and through her lunch, she yeah. sat there talking with me. We talked about diet, lifestyle, the fact yeah. that I was training, I was cutting weight. I was like all of these things that were happening to me. And she sent me back to my doctor with like a panel of tests that she wanted to run. Yeah, and yeah. so we would go back and forth. And um, eventually what it came out was like, my hormones were all out of whack, right? Yeah. And it's like, I didn't even know my hormones could affect my sleep like that. Like I was just clueless. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, really it just started me on this path of like reading books and taking courses and really trying to understand the full impact of our hormones as women and things that they impact. And when I look back on it now, knowing what I know, like the, insomnia wasn't my only hormone issue it was like the the whatever the straw that broke the camel's yeah. back right mm -hmm. there was all of these other red flags that my body was sending me um that I just didn't listen or I didn't know that it could be any other way you know what I mean so like really bad cramps or migraines like my mom got migraines before her period my nana did so I just thought well, it's just genetic it's just what we have to live through everyone has cramps all my friends have cramps like, yeah, I thought normal. it was, it's just normal. <laughs> mm -hmm. And like, right, statistically, right. it's totally normal. But right. biologically, it's not. This yeah. is your body trying to tell you something. And um, I've read something recently where um, your like your menstrual cycle is now for women, your fifth vital sign. And I think that's so important, because it's such a really big gauge to your overall health. And we just we're ignorant about it. No one, no one teaches us about it. Um, and what, what turns out is, you know, I was, uh, in my early forties and I was starting perimenopause. And again, I thought that was just the thing when my mom got hot and sweaty, like <laughs> when she was like in her fifties, yeah, 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 yeah. like no one told me this could last 10 years, like what the hell, <laughs> or that it would start so young. So it was just so much like a mystery and, um, around, you know, women's hormone cycles, um, the different stages of our life that people are talking about. And I just felt like also my family doctor wasn't really equipped to, to help me either that it, the, the answer was just, here's a prescription, here's a bandaid yeah. that might have fixed my, my symptom. It might have helped my sleep, but it didn't address the root cause. I still didn't know what the root cause was. And I didn't, I didn't want a bandaid. I wanted to fix what was happening. Yeah. So yeah, that's what started me on this, um, this path. And I was already doing nutrition coaching. And so it really, and most of my clients have been women, um, since I started. So it really just seemed like a natural, um, a progression to take my nutrition coaching in that direction because food exercise, lifestyle, mindset, stress, all of these things are so impactful on, on our hormones and our overall health as women. So yeah. Long story short, 
No, that's <laughs> great. And, and every, everything was coming back because, you know, I heard you in, in, in Instagram live, which yeah. I, 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 I was there the whole time listening from beginning to the end. And I went back to it because um, there was something, um, as you were saying, that no one's teaching us. It, it's just everything. Yeah, you, were so, you feel like crap. Yeah, of course you have your period. You're moody, sure. It's because yeah. you have your period, and like, and um, we kind of go like this. And the thing that really struck with me was, and what I said is that there are some times in the month when it's gonna go perfectly, perfectly okay for self care and for organizing and for just low activities and that's when you said that I that's what I walked away it's okay right yeah. and it's about sharing with other women who um they could be label uh, also lazy or attitudinal like all, all these labels that we can put and I really yeah. will love um as a matter of fact if I could share my screen because the, the, mm -hmm. the post that did it and I posted on Facebook that really caught my attention was your post in Instagram so um guys uh Karen is an Instagram and social media and right now I'm gonna share her social media account in the gram yeah where You'll see her posting, dancing, challenging me to do fun facts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it took me, it took me a while for me to write a thing, a fun thing. I was like, I'm struggling. I had like, I call, I text my husband, I, I text my friend. Um, and then I got a whole bunch of things about like what I'd done. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to take this challenge and I'm going <laughs> to like set a timer and just write it, write it all out. And I did. So think. it's hard. It was hard for me too. I'm like, I don't know. I don't have any fun facts. And I'm like, so <laughs> so wait, who challenged you? I thought you started this. No, it was a girlfriend of mine um, from the gym. She challenged oh. me and I was like, oh, and I'm like, okay, who do I know will, will take this up, take up this challenge? I'm like, who loves challenges? Yeah. Kristen and Patty. Though. Kristen and Patty. They'll <laughs> totally do it. Yeah. yeah. So the reason I posted this is, um, so our, our society is like, okay, let's face it. It's built for men and it's built for like, mm. go, go, go. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except for as women, um, we have natural cycles to our hormones, to our energy. So I'm, I'm really a big fan of like honoring those cycles and stop trying to force what's not natural for us. Mm. Right. Yeah. So even if we take, for example, um, uh, fitness, right. And I can't remember if it's, if I put it a part of this, these posts, but like, um, when you look at day one of our cycle, which is, um, it's, uh, the day first day you get your period. So this is day one. And actually our hormones are pretty flatlined. This is where we don't have a lot of estrogen or progesterone. And ironically, the day you get your period is when you're like, you're most like a man. So fitness wise, this is when you can do the things um, keeping up with the dude next to you at the gym. <laughs> okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and I had always wondered like why one week I can do this hard workout and feel great. And the next week I try to do the same or a similar type of workout. And I feel like, first of all, I'm crying because I'm frustrated. <laughs> I feel like I'm trying to move through cement and like my legs are like, and, yeah. and a lot of it has to do with our hormones. And so there's a lot of, uh, stuff out there about training for your cycle. And it goes beyond just training for your cycle because it's your overall, like your overall energy levels and your moods, right? Yeah. So if you think about um, uh, day one of your cycle, um, this is probably when you're feeling a little bit more introverted, a little bit lower energy, and it's not, it's less to do with your hormones, but like as women, we're losing blood. We're, so we're losing iron um, and we could feel like crampy and headachey. Um, we're also a little bit more emotional and this is when we're most intuitive, right? Mm. Um, so this is a really good time. First of all, self-care. I mean, yeah. okay. First of all, for women, we should do self-care all the time, um, <laughs> yes. but this is a time where it is really important to, to take care of ourselves when we have this like lower energy. It's a really good time for making decisions because we are more intuitive at this time of the month. Um, and it's a really good time for ideas, like, like giving birth to ideas during this time, rather mm. than like the doing it's the like 
thinking and the ideas, yeah. the creation phase, right? Yeah. So Ooh, really on, phase. I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like really honoring like what your what your hormones and your your cycles um, giving you at that time, and and living living towards that, right? So mm-hmm. when I know, you know, um, and and I highly recommend if you're not already as a woman, um, track your period so you actually know when things are coming or where you are in your your cycle um because there's nothing worse than like always being surprised every month like why am I so cranky today (laughs) I mean and then two days later like oh that's why um so there's like lots of free apps out there I use p tracker only because it was like it's free and I've been using it for years um p tracker p tracker yeah okay and the cool thing about like tracking your cycles this is like a little bit off topic but if and when things go wrong um you have so much data that you can take to like your healthcare practitioner or your women's health coach or whatever it is to say hey look i used to have uh 28 day cycles for the last two years and now i'm only having 21 day cycles like what's going on um so this this stuff is really important where you can log um um, uh, different symptoms and how you're feeling that day. And so it's really good for also if you're trying to get pregnant or anything like that. Right. So, yeah. um, there's lots of different apps, like I said, P tracker, I'm not like sponsored by them or anything like that. <laughs> just happens to be the one I started using like five years ago. So right. it's like, and it's got free. my data and it's okay. free, cool. which is also like prices, right? That's a plus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's your menstrual freight menstrual phase. Okay. Um, so we can go to the next one, right. which is your follicular phase. Okay. Yeah. So this is like, uh, your period's kind of ending and this is your moving towards, um, ovulation. Okay. So this is when we feel our best. Okay. This is when we're going to have moderate to high energy. We're really creative. We're really good at problem solving. We can be more extroverted, a little braver, so this is a time that you want to have new adventures. You want to start something new. You want to dive into some creative work. You can plan and set your goals. Um, so this is a really good high energy time. This is generally when we're feeling pretty awesome, right? <laughs> so our estrogen is rising a little bit as we get towards ovulation. Um, and it's just a really good energy time. So I deal with... Um, a lot of women who uh, maybe they're having trouble uh, with, with insomnia, which is what, mm. what where I started. Um, and generally from like day one of your period towards ovulation, this is where you're going to sleep better um, because we don't have a lot of crazy hormone things happening. Yeah. Um, this is just when we feel really good. We can, um, we get some really um, hard like exercise in our bodies are feeling, feeling awesome. So go follicular phase. We like you. (laughs) (laughs) This is so great to track and plan out. This is so great. Totally. Oh my goodness. Then we get into ovulation. So ovulation is like, this is key. First of all, a lot of women think that like your period is like the big show for your menstrual cycle, but really ovulation is queen. Mm -hmm. This is where everything happens, right? And, um, this is one of the reasons why, um, and this is like a total opinion piece here, but I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of hormonal birth control. Yeah. So hormonal birth control shuts down your body's, uh, natural hormones, your ovulation and replaces it with synthetic hormones. So a lot of times, one of my big pet peeves, it much like the antidepressant my doctor tried to give me, um, a lot of doctors will prescribe hormonal birth control as a band-aid to fix any of your um, in hormone imbalance uh, symptoms, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you have acne. Okay, we'll just take this hormonal birth control pill yeah. and it'll fix your acne. What it will do is it might make the symptoms of your acne better. It's not addressing the root cause. It's shutting down your own body's ovulation, your own hormones, and giving you synthetic ones that don't have the protective benefits that your own natural body's hormones. We, we like estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen gets a bad rap, um, mm. but these are so important and they're so protective for us for so many different things. Um, brain health, bones, muscle, um, our moods, like it, they're very important. So I am 
I highly encourage uh, if anyone is on a hormonal birth control or thinking about it, I would consider a non-hormonal uh, option um, just so you can maintain the health benefits of your own natural hormones. And if your hormones are out of whack, which is why you're thinking about hormonal birth control, <laughs> then just come talk to me. And we'll, yes. fix you. we'll fix you up. Yeah. So, so like I said, mm-hmm. ovulation is queen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So right before you ovulate, um, this is where we're gonna, our testosterone is, is the highest. So, uh, women, yes, ladies, we have testosterone. Um, and this is what's making us feel really confident and sexy, right? <laughs> so of course we want to feel sexy and have a high libido right before ovulation, because this is our body's way of getting us have sexy time, right? When we're yeah. fertile, right? Um, I call that the same thing. <laughs> sexy time. Funny, yes. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Go this on, is, Fred, this go is on. when we have the high energy, we're confident, we're sexy, we're a little bit more impulsive. Um, yeah. So this is a great time. If you're tracking your cycles and you know things are pretty regular, this is time to um, book any public speaking. Mm. So maybe doing a Zoom Facebook Live with your friend Patty. Make sure you're <laughs> ovulating and feeling really good. This is a good time for important conversations, some fun dates, and times to like just connect with others. Um, mm. So this is really the the um, the follicular follicular phase. You're feeling pretty good, but ov- right around ovulation, man, this is when you're at your best. So highest energy, highest confidence, sexiest self. Love it. And connect with others. Look at that. Yes. Okay, cool. So let's go to. Yeah. So, so now for the bad news. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Tell us. (laughs) Okay. So this is the, this is the luteal phase. Um, And uh, this is when your estrogen and your progesterone after ovulation, they start rearing their heads and now if things are in sync and the levels are where they should be um so basically your estrogen will rise and your progesterone should rise just above it okay so estrogen should be here progesterone should be here so estrogen is the like let's let's get shit done hormone but Mm -hmm. progesterone is the like you know slow your roll hormone Mm -hmm. they need to be they need to be in balance right Mm -hmm. so when when they're not in balance, this is when you're going to feel it the most. For me, this is where the insomnia was happening because my progesterone was really, really low. Mm. And this is where in perimenopause, um, you're naturally our, our progesterone is going to be lower in perimenopause because per, uh, progesterone is produced after ovulation, your, your eggs are released and what's left is, a, is called the corpus luteum. And that triggers your body to produce progesterone. And that's your like feel good, calming, happy hormone. So when we're in, um, when we start getting into our late thirties, early forties and um, perimenopause stops ha- starts happening, uh, our eggs, we start losing eggs. So we don't always have a viable egg every, every month for ovulation. So what happens when, so say like my right ovary, doesn't have an egg this month, what happens is there's nothing to trigger the progesterone um, to be released into my, or made and released into my body. There's no corpus luteum. So that way, even if I have a really normal level of estrogen, there's no progesterone there to um, help keep things um, calm and cool and collected. Mm -hmm. So this is where you get like symptoms of like estrogen dominance, Mm. even if you don't have out of whack estrogen. And this is really where peri- perimenopause is that fun roller coaster because next month now I got, I got progesterone again. And then, you know, it's up and down. Um, yeah. There's definitely things that we can do. Um, but the luteal phase is usually where you really notice when things are out of whack. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so first of all, you, you're, you're going to be a little more sensitive you really good at attention to detail. So this is a really great time for like administrative tasks. Um, you have a little bit lower energy. Um, you're going to be looking for some comfort. You're probably going to be hungrier. And it's just the way that your body um, can deal with, first of all, it takes a lot of energy. Um, this part of like getting ready for, um, for back to day one, where we're going to have our menstrual cycle. Um, and um our body deals with uh, carbohydrates a little bit differently. So in terms of like, say nutrition, 
uh, yeah. that first half of your cycle, a woman might be okay doing like keto or intermittent fasting in that first half. But in this luteal phase, um, you know, it takes a lot of energy and um, our body really needs the carbohydrates uh, during this time. So this is why I don't advocate like keto and intermittent fasting for women throughout their whole cycle especially um, because of the way our hormones play into it. Again, we're not the same as men. Men yeah. might have really good time, a good time, a good time on hey. keto. They might do really <laughs> well on keto or with fasting, but it's for, for women, it's really hard on our adrenals. Um, and especially during this phase, right? So, yeah. so think about it. This is the few days before your period. Like this is really about nesting, organizing. Um, again, self-care comes up because we really want to, um, to take care of ourselves when we're getting ready for, um, for day one to come back around. Yeah. So in terms of like fitness, this is not the time that you're going to like smash a workout at the gym. Right. Um, no steel maids guys. Okay. Yeah. Out there. <laughs> yeah. This might be more like a really good time for some yoga and some walking and just a lot more gentler, um, mm -hmm. in terms of your fitness as well. Mm -hmm. So so this is where these all come into play, like the fitness, the nutrition, um, and then the mindset and the lifestyle stuff all come in together. And it's the whole um, endocrine system where, where your hormones are made, all of this is really linked. And um, so really learning to like, uh, to live into your cycle and to where you mm -hmm. are in your hormones, rather than trying to force something that that's not, it's not in tune with your body. So I'm not going to set up like big, a big party when I'm in the luteal phase, because I'm not going to want a party. I'm not going right. to want to talk to people. Right. <laughs> I, I want be their, home. Kristen's party is coming, Lance and Kristen. Oh, yes. So, Kristen, I know you're going to be watching this. <laughs> yeah, Kristen, check your cycle. You might need to postpone. Yeah. Live into your cycle. Oh, I love yeah. it. You should do a, a hashtag. Hmm. hmm. I, oh, I like this. Good idea. Check your cycle. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hashtag check your cycle. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Okay. Yeah. Thank you awesome. for joining us on this. Yeah. Thank you for having me on Friday. So I good love chatting it. With you. I love it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And I will see you uh, on the Enlifter community or I mean, and on Instagram. <laughs> and Instagram. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Slash Facebook. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. I truly thank you. It. All right. Okay. Please make sure to follow Karan on her social media accounts below. And please pass this video, share this video with the woman who can honor her cycle face today.